Okay, good morning guys. Today we're going to uh, swap out the door latch mechanism for a 2004 uh, Toyota Sequoia. I've been having problems with my driver's side door not shutting. So if it's gotten worn out and you've tried to uh, shut your door, this latch might have gotten worn out. And so when I was shutting the door before, it would shut but then bounce back out. I've already done this one this morning and it closes just fine now. So that's what we're going to go over is how to change that mechanism inside the door. So we'll go over here and um, go over kind of how to take the door apart and uh, how to swap it out. Okay, let's first go over how to take the door panel off. First thing is on this side over here, I'm missing a couple because my truck is old, but there are small little uh, trim pieces that you push in in the middle, and then it should loosen up and allow them to come out. You're going to remove this trim piece up here. Just carefully pry it up and it's going to uh, allow you access to a Phillips head. Try to be careful so you don't break the plastic. Okay. And then there's another one down here that has a little slot. You just pop this off. It'll allow access to another Phillips head. And then there's one right inside here by the indoor um, door piece. Just get a flat head in there and try to pop it out of the way. Maybe. <laughs> there he goes and pry that out and it'll allow you access to that over the Phillips head there. So, these pieces, this piece, this piece, and this, and then I'll show you how to get this bezel off here. Okay, once you get the pieces out that I talked about um, and you've taken out the little Phillips head screw from in here, um, you're also going to want to get this prepared to take the door panel off. Um, some people will leave it on and then reach around the back and try to disconnect the uh, power connector. But you can also just kind of carefully um, pry it up from the bottom, hopefully here. There you go. Just kind of pry up gently and it'll kind of pull that section out. And then if you want, you can disconnect the electrical. I like when I take the door panel off to just leave it like this and then when I take the actual panel off I just slide this through and get it out of my way so that it stays connected in case I need to test something or roll the window up or anything like that. But one of the trickier parts to this door is this small bezel piece. You need to be really careful or you'll break it. Just take a very, very small flathead screwdriver and right about here and here you're going to reach in and pry upwards until you feel it kind of pop off. Same thing down here reach in about right here and kind of push down and when you do that it will release those tabs and then you pull the handle out and pull back slightly because this has a little hook on here that attaches in here but just take your time and uh, be gentle and you should be fine but basically these are the tabs right here that you're trying to uh, pry up when you stick the screwdriver in there so alright with that we'll go ahead and uh, take the door panel off. Also up here you'll have this trim piece that might have your speaker there. It usually is just a, a little trim piece that you can pull off. So you'll want to pull that off before you take the door off as well. So let me get set up and take the door panel off. All right. so now that all that stuff is off you're pretty much ready to take the panel off. The only thing that's holding it on now are the plastic clips that go around the door. So you can take a panel tool and just kind of pry out and if you can even get a hold of the uh, plastic I find that if I get in there I'm able to kind of get my fingers in there and start working my way around there won't be any up here It'll, this sits on the top of the windowsill and just pop off all the bottoms and the sides all the way around and then you'll feel it's kind of loose. Like I said, I like to just take this off and push this through. 
Okay, lift up slightly to get it off this uh, rail here. And then you don't want to pull it away right away. You want to reach back carefully and disconnect this little lower door light right here. And that's it. Your panel is off. Set it aside. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plastic off. Uh, button preps. We want to take this portion of the door in interior door handle off it simply slides forward in slots so if you just grab it carefully and kind of push it backwards you'll find that it'll come off okay and then I'll show you how to take off these uh, pieces here okay to take these off um, just turn it around and push up a little bit on these try to pry this out of this there you go like that and then push this one that way and it'll kind of loosen them up okay and then what you'll notice is that there's a little tab in here and these can break off sometimes you want to grab uh, purchase a new one of these let me adjust this a little bit so you can see a little better um, it has little tabs on here that hold these little balls in but basically turn it this way and you'll pop that out my tab is actually broken down there so Normally you would just want to make sure that you pull this line far enough uh, forward so that you can get these little things out and you're just going to slide them out, okay? Hopefully that makes sense and then set this thing aside and we'll work on taking the plastic back. Okay, so now I'll show you a little bit more in depth the actual uh, door latch mechanism. These wires go down and attach to the door latch mechanism. Um, you'll have to take the mechanism out and transfer over the electronic portion uh, that controls your automatic door locks and stuff like that. But they come down into here, and what it looks like underneath all that is this. This is the new door latch for the passenger side. Okay, and it looks fairly complex, but it's not too bad. And one thing I can suggest that I did on the other side, because I have never done this before, I've gotten inside the door a lot to do car stereo and things like that, so I'm used to getting door panels off, but I've literally never touched any of this type of stuff. And I just took my time and I even took a bunch of pictures so that if I got myself in a bind, I would uh, be able to go back. So take pictures if you need to, but this is the mechanism. I'll show you how to get it out of there. I can tell you right now that some of the stuff you're gonna wanna um, take off is what I took off for these three screws here. Um, you need to pop this plastic uh, little grommet out so that you can have access to the bolt for the door handle. Um, this one here. Um, this one here is the bottom latch, which is this portion right here. Okay. And then most people that have done this in their door have found that they need to get the, um, the rail that the window slides on a little bit out of the way in order to actually get the whole entire unit out of the door. So the other one that I found that I had to loosen or take off completely was this is the bottom bolt for that for that uh, windows uh, guide. So you take that off and that will allow you. Sorry about that. I got accidentally hit the off button. That will allow you to get this. Uh, window guide out of the way so that you can kind of pull it down and out and then up inside what you'll notice is there's a couple of those attachment points that have plastic on them that you'll have to uh, get out of the way but for now what I'm gonna do is take off these bolts this one this one this one and these and then I'll uh, get back on and and keep going okay so let's go over a couple more details real quick um, first things first is I didn't know if when I messed with the uh, window rail if I would have any issues but if you're ever worried about your window you can just take some uh, painters tape and tape your window over your door frame so that it won't slide down it didn't end up being an issue but I didn't know earlier uh, it was just a safety precaution that I realized I didn't need but if you ever worried about this door sliding down because you're working on the internals of the door just tape up your window like that so 
I think the only things you need is a 10 millimeter for all of the uh, screws that I took out. This one and this one. And uh, is there another one? Oh, also up in here, we're actually going to take the door handle off. So this bolt up in here. And then that's why you take out this little grommet because up in there, you're going to want to take off the other um, bolt in there for the uh, door handle. You'll see it over there. Um, then these door screws down here they are a t30 Torx fit so if you have a t30 a 10 millimeter a phillips head and a flat head you should be able to get through most of this stuff and uh, also when you get the actual mechanism out you need to transfer some stuff so you need a uh, slightly uh, smaller screwdriver uh, and you'll see that when I take it apart Okay, this part might be a little bit hard to explain, but basically if you see the orange piece back in here and uh, also the yellow piece here, they are kind of a plastic locking mechanism for the uh, metal thing to stay in place. So what you're going to try to do is go back in there and pop that little um, plastic portion off of the line. It's kind of hard to film and do it at the same time. Let's see if I can do it. Just be really gentle. Now, um, I'm going to take it off and then I'll uh, record afterwards. Uh, I found that I was able to get this one off inside the door, but then I, I wanted to be extra careful with this locking mechanism, and I found that it was easier to do by taking the door handle out. So I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, now you might have a little bit better idea, uh, a little bit better view of those tabs. So basically, you're going to take a small little pick or your fingers, if you can get them up inside the door, and you're just going to push on it until it uh, comes off of this little metal piece down here that you kind of can't see here. Let me see if I can. It's attached to this piece here, okay? And then the other piece for the mechanism goes to the door handle itself. It's the same thing with this one. It was just down on there attached. You just want to carefully pry it up and get it out of the way. And then the reason I take the actual door handle off is because it's very hard to get this part out uh, and I want to be really careful so instead of trying to work down and inside there from the back of the door I'd rather just pull this out so it allows me better access to very carefully pop this uh, this line off here so what I found worked best is I took that off and then I took the end of a needle nose plier and you kind of can't see it. Let me see if I can show it to you here. Kind of in my own shadow here. Um, you're gonna take the end of your needle nose and just squeeze on that. Kind of like this right here. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. <laughs> may or may not be able to while I'm filming. But I don't want to break any plastic so I just want to be extra careful. There it goes. So if you see I squeezed and it popped that thing out. Set this down here. And then you just slide that piece out. And I took this completely out of the way. And as we go back over here, you'll see, let me take the camera off here. Sorry about that, guys. Um, that's what these pieces are that come up. So now that you've done that, you should be able to start trying to remove the mechanism. This part right here is just a plastic piece that attaches right here, so you should be able to just pull up. It detaches from there, and once that screws out, it detaches from there. Unclip your lines. Oh, fell down in there, we'll get it. And then you're going to want to take your lines off of here as well. Okay. And then it's a little hard to explain, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to start dropping that mechanism from up above and you're going to find that you're going to have to pry this uh, window guide out towards you. Let's see if I can show you. You're going to pull it out this way towards you because that's what's going to allow you enough gap back in behind there to drop the mechanism down and to kind of pull it out of there. So with that, we'll give it a shot. Okay guys, we're going to try to remove it now. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit confusing, but basically uh, you just have to uh, 
work it down through the door and on the other side of that rail. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, I've already disconnected it, but there is going to be a power plug that goes into the mechanism uh, for your power windows and stuff like that. So just take these, push them back inside here, and we'll work at just trying to get it out of there. Okay, it's come loose. This thing right here pops out, and it'll start dropping down. And because of those arms that shoot back up to the door handle, that's why you can't just pull it out. So you have to kind of bring it down. I found, bring it down carefully. Just take your time. Reach in and pull out on that door rail, which is like right here. You can't see it, it's impossible to show you, but reach out gently and pull the bottom of the rail and then let this thing drop all the way down. And finally, when it gets to the bottom, it'll just kind of drop and kind of clear out of the way. There you have it. Get caught up. So it basically sits up in there like this. So the electrical connector is about right here. You just want to reach in there and pull it out and then pull the entire mechanism off. And then what we're going to do is remove this electrical system here with some screws and uh, put it on the new one and then reinstall it. Okay guys, here goes the kind of the most complex part of the uh, install is removing this stuff and putting on that one. I find that if you just keep your orientations kind of the same that you won't get too confused and hopefully this video just pretty much shows you exactly what you need to do. But just take your time. You don't want to bend any of these pieces or mess up any of this stuff down in here. So you just want to go nice and slow and uh, don't rush it and it'll come out just fine. So there's a few screws you're gonna take out to get this thing off to attach to there. This is one of them, that's one of them, okay? And then when you flip it over, or there's one more right here, okay? All these little tiny screws. And then there is one more right here. So you're just gonna start trying to take that stuff off. Uh, I had a couple that were fairly oxidized and um, so just be really, really careful trying to take them out. I used some uh, penetrating compound to try to loosen it up, but they're so small that I don't want to uh, kind of strip out the top. So make sure that your screwdriver is the right size for the job, of course. Um, so there's that one, okay? And then we'll go ahead and flip it over, and we'll take off this one. This one, so I'm having to push down quite a bit just to get this to grab without stripping out the top. But I got it. All right. And like I said, take pictures if you have to. This goes through this upper hole right here, and this goes through the side hole right here. So this is the top shroud right here that we'll take off. It kind of comes off. Kind of make your way out of there. All right, now you see that it looks pretty much the same as that one. We'll put this one on after we do the electronic portion. So on the electronic portion, like I said, this one and this one. This one looks a little bit oxidized, hopefully it's fine. These are longer screws, oh, this one's fine. Okay, and this one. This is kind of the most time-consuming part to film. Okay, so now you're going to try to attach, if you see these mechanisms down in here, it's kind of a ball up here, here, and this thing here that attaches to this stuff down here. It's all the exact same. You just have to orient yourself. I'm going to come around to this side and see if I can show you. I think I got all the screws out. Let me double check. Yeah. So you'll feel it get kind of loose and all that's holding it on is the fact that it's attached to that ball, but mostly 
this portion goes in through that little tab and once it goes in it kind of goes in and then curves that way so you don't want to yank on it you just want to be careful so I think take the top portion off first see how it just disconnected from there and then you want to kind of get in there this one's the old one so I'm not as worried about it but and see how that's got a curve to it Let's see, if I can put it. see that so it kind of goes in and through okay so like I said old one just keep your orientation the same don't get yourself confused okay and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna take this portion down here you can see it right there I'm gonna carefully run it through and kind of carefully bend it so that it goes in the way it's supposed to like I said if you feel it doesn't work for you just take your time don't force anything. There we go. As soon as I got it to a certain angle, it just slowly dropped into place. Okay, so now you see that that one is in. These are going to go over the ball just like that. And that's it, guys. And then what you're going to do is go back, line up your screws again. Hopefully I've kept my hands out of the way enough for you guys to see what I'm doing here. Okay, there's one. The other one is down here. I don't remember what I paid for these mechanisms. I want to say they were one and a half, like 150 area. I don't re recall, but I know that a place wanted to charge me almost $400 to do this job. So I think if you just take your time, you can totally do it without spending all the labor. Okay, so if you remember, it sits kind of like this. This upper arm goes through this hole and the other one goes through here. So you just want to kind of get it up in there. Get this one in as well. Shimmy it. There it goes. Okay. Come on, where are you? There it goes. All right, kind of like that. Then you'll line up your hole again over here. I've noticed that the screws on the new uh, piece feel a little bit tighter. Um, probably just because it's new, you're just going to have to kind of hold some pressure on it. And like I said, be really careful to... Let's see. Yeah, see, it's not working right there. Alright, what do we got? Yeah, they look to be the same, they're just... It's really taking a lot of pressure on the top of the screw to push it down without stripping out the Phillips portion. Okay, and then if you remember, you flip it over. And the other one is right, if I recall correctly here. Get it lined up. Right up here. Get it someday. Maybe. All right, well, I'm going to try to get that screw in with two hands and not worry about filming. 
and then basically the unit will be ready to put back into the door. So I'll come back when I get that screw in and I'm ready to put it back in. All right, guys, uh, it's the next day actually, and I did put the entire assembly together yesterday and put it back in the vehicle, hoping that um, this whole new assembly would fix a little bit of my locking issue, but it did not. So I removed it and actually had to order a new actuator. Um, what was happening is that, where's that piece here? This part right here was, uh, you would hit the lock button on the remote control and this thing would go, but it wouldn't quite close completely. And so then it ended up where the uh, door was not actually locked and from the outside you could still unlock the door. So picked up a new actuator, hoping that'll fix the problem. Going to reinstall this and we'll see how it goes. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to reinstall it. A uh, couple important points. Uh, don't forget to plug it back in on the actuator and then also uh, I might have explained this before but um, This bolt is a little bit hard to get to through this little grommet hole here So I'm actually going to reinstall the entire door handle first. Don't forget to reach back inside the door and uh, Get those pieces put back in here and put the clips back down But I find that's a lot easier to do if this is actually installed first since you don't have to be trying to take this part uh, off so I'll install this, slowly glide it back inside, and then I'll check back in. Okay guys, got everything reinstalled, put my plastic back up. Uh, a couple key points, don't forget to plug in the uh, electrical connector to the actuator. And then also up inside, these pieces that have the plastic things that attach, don't forget to do that up here by the outer door handle. But if you have a car, that, uh, or a Sequoia should I say, that is having a problem shutting or you shut it and it bounces back out like my driver's side was doing you can replace this part and it will fix that and in the case of mine my wife and I would shut the door and try to lock it and then she would pull on it and it would still come unlocked because the actuator was failing and would not uh, push this cable uh, to lock the door completely but now you can see I can shut the door and lock it and we are good to go. Anyway, I hope that uh, video helps you guys out. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please write them below. Thanks, have a great day.